Which Asian countries do Asian Americans like the most and like the least? The data is out. Let's discuss it. You know, maybe the results are surprising or maybe quite unsurprising, depending on your belief system. Let's run the clip. Which Asians do Asian Americans have beef with? Asian Americans rating Asian countries. Green is more favorable. Yellow is less favorable. Asian Americans have the most beef with China. And Taiwanese Americans are its biggest hater because self-determination. Indians, Vietnamese, and Filipinos favor their homelands. But everyone else has moderate beef. Taiwan and South Korea are moderately favored and Japan is more favored, except by Koreans, cause war. Korean Americans are the biggest haters and Filipino Americans are the biggest appreciators. The US is viewed most favorably by Asian Americans because Asian American. Oh, say can You have been properly informed. Boom, there Ooh. you go, Andrew. That's Brian Shu, the data guy. He's all about the statistics. Hey, man, I like it. You know, I wouldn't say he interprets the data or navigates the data, but he lets you know the data is out there and it's up to you to talk about it. But it's actually up to us because I feel like that's what we do on this channel. I'll take the data from Brian and we'll discuss it. Right. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Out Sauce at SmileOutSauce.com. Here's the title of the data, Andrew. Asian Americans view of their homelands, other places in Asia and the U.S. Here's the ranking. It went U.S. number one, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. Now we're starting to get into the bad scores. Philippines, Vietnam, India, and mainland China. Dead last. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, Brian Shu himself, parents from mainland China. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you know, as Chinese Americans, this isn't shocking. But I do want to discuss it because I think that there's a lot of different takeaways. I think when you see the color map and you see it go from green to tan, you're like, oh, we crossed the line here. But uh, I think there's a lot of a uh, funny discussion. So we're going to go through that. We'll give you our own takeaways at the end. Hey, by the way, there's also this other out of the same Pew Research study. Uh, there's also another graph. Asian Americans have favorable views of the U.S. Uh, it's like it kind of just it just reinterpreted the data right. a little bit with a different infographic. Right. Uh, by the way, we don't have geo. Uh, geographical granular data we don't have age range data so it could be di a lot different amongst the younger right. generation on the west coast in 626 this is national aggregate data right right we don't know where these people were when they were polled or wherever but or what generation they are first generation second generation um obviously there is no like cambodia on here or indonesia i don't think they have the numbers in america this was polling asian americans so these are the largest asian american population yeah, no these are by far the largest asian american groups yeah. i don't think uh unfortunately the ones that got left off like you said just the just the scale of the population isn't there um let's just lead off with a few comments andrew somebody said not gonna lie the top three u.s japan and south korea have a superiority complex so this rating makes sense to me that's funny yeah no but those are also let's keep it real u.s japan and south korea generally known to be the most comfortable countries to live in out of all those on the list Obviously, taiwan US being slept on though oh taiwan Taiwan's you're right, there, you're right but a lot of people are not aware to be honest of the existence of Taiwan, unless you work in tech, microchips, or you're like, know about Asia Pacific. Right, right, right. And you know what, for this poll, I do have to say that's interesting is that they were able to pull and separate Taiwanese people from Chinese people. Meaning, but then Hong Kongese people, I'm assuming fell under Chinese people, but Taiwanese people didn't. So anyways, we that's the thing about data, guys. That's uh, I guess Hong Kong couldn't even bring up China stats, man. Uh, Andrew, a lot of this people led to a lot of discussions about sinophobia. Mm. Why is there so much casual sinophobia everywhere? Um, man, this is really complicated. It's like, I'll tell you why sinophobia is so complicated, Andrew. Because it could be from the 1800s sinophobia, from the 1900s sinophobia, from the 1950s and 60s sinophobia, or current 2024 sinophobia. Yeah. And you can trace, those are all like, it's all put under the bucket of sinophobia, but the reasonings are completely different. Yeah, and one thing about sinophobia that I think is a controversial take on my part is that China, for most people, most people, has not done anything super bad yet. Yet. 
You know what I mean? Like, as far as like spying on the US or like, yes, there are like disputes over the waters in South China Sea. I can't speak on that. That's the government thing. But I think as a whole, considering China never pointed nukes at America, I think there is quite a bit of sign of yeah, failure. China, what I'm saying. China gets over punished. I'm not saying they did everything good. For sure, they did bad things. A lot of countries did a lot of bad things, some more than others. But I will say that, honestly, it's probably the lack of cool things. Right, I feel right. like China's being punished for the lack of upside. Because right. look at Japan, Andrew. They did a bunch of messed up stuff, but they got so much upside, it's almost like people felt like it made up for everything. Yeah, people forgot about it. So I guess, David, we have seven conclusions about how China is viewed in this study. And by the way, even Chinese Americans aren't ranking China super high. They did rank China the more favorable, but it's really still in the lower half of favorability. Right, and I'm going to go ahead and assume I do not know that a little bit, uh, these stats are based around a little bit like older people because older people tend to take geopolitical polls sure. more than younger people. Sure. Younger people are more like skibbity Ohio toilet, you know, yeah. Point number one, Andrew, China's bad image around Asia. Um, yeah, this is probably impacting it in the sense of like, the way people feel about stuff that happened due to communism, right? Right, and obviously China is viewed actually very favorably by business people all around the world because they do business with China, even in Africa or Latin America. China's building a lot of stuff in there. But obviously in Asia, where China's power is wielding the most, right? Like I said, a lot of Vietnamese are against China because China is trying to claim certain islands and waters. Uh, obviously, Taiwan, I don't, of course, I understand that, obviously. Um, and then I guess Japan and Korea, obviously, like uh, China is closer, is unfortunately kind of close with North Korea or at least cool with North Korea, yeah. which threatens South it, Korea. So it's, it's essentially, I, I'll tell you the thing that's really complicated about China is it operates as a rival to the Anglosphere. So basically, the sinosphere, the modern version iteration of it, runs opposite to the Anglosphere. The Anglosphere, as much as people criticize it for colonization and blah, 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 people are like on Team Anglo now. Yeah. And it's like a challenge to that along with like, I don't even know, Russians, they're like white, but they're kind of Asian. Whatever. Yeah, I will just say a lot of the allies that China has are very unfavorable to the U.S. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Point number two, Andrew, China's unfavorable image amongst the Chinese themselves. Oh, so uh, let's look at the numbers back again. 40 Chinese in America rank China favorability 41. That falls below the 50 mark, so it's still yellow. Obviously, Korea and Taiwanese rank it favorability super low. Um, Gave it a two. Oh, man, yeah. Yo, I mean, 41 was the highest, too. Look at the other score, super low. Yeah, man. yeah. So, obviously, for me, I can see why a lot of Chinese Americans did it because I think a lot of Chinese Americans maybe – especially of the older generation, they were maybe their descendants or uh, have roots from Hong Kong, which a lot of Hong Kongese people aren't going to view China, like mainland China as favorable. Or a lot of parents who came over in 1965, 1970, uh, or any sort of Chinese parents who escaped communism. Right. Post Tiananmen, post of May course. 4th. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm as sad as it does hurt me, I can understand. Yeah, uh, point number three, Andrew, the Western Angles fear PSYOP against the Chinese. What's this mean? So basically, the U.S. government has funded, and this is a real thing from what I believe, like $500 million earmarked out for basically generating uh, an anti-China campaign. Mm. And it's not to say that China doesn't give it ammo, but that ammo which is like a few like negative info and it might get like 5x or 10x in the media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or, or, or good news might get downplayed. By the way, I'm not saying the bad stories out of China are false, but they just might get extra spotlight and good stuff might get less spotlight. Right. Do you think they're, the algorithm is pushing that Aaron Lewis song? Made in China. I made in China of the cheapest parts or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's actually just logical because I'm sure China's doing it to America too. You want to demonize your enemy. Some people think it's because uh, they're preparing the American psyche for a hot yeah. war. I hope not. I don't think so. I actually don't. I don't think it's going to be a hot war. I don't think. I think we are already at war with each other, and it's just a cold yeah, yeah. war. Yeah, actually, you could argue that China and America are already at a trade war, right? right or a right. cold war, and that that's the extent of modern warfare. Essentially, right, right, right. I mean, obviously, other parts of the world, 
whatever, but, but between countries that have lots of money. Uh, point number four, everything in 2024, Andrew, has a measure of truth behind it, but there's also a lot of exaggeration. Yeah, and I think that's social media too. I mean, I think if you were to imagine delete social media, how would you hear about the bad or good things about China? In the newspaper, not really. The newspaper got to talk about local news and all this other stuff. You might, and if you don't read the paper and you're not on social media, how are you going to hate China? Right. Right? You know, or how much are you going to hate China? It's weird right now. There's like a bunch of anti-China YouTubes where they make like 10 videos a week that are anti. And then, of course, on the flip uh, side, there's going to be like maybe government funded channels that are trying to only say the good side. Right. But actually, the, here's the truth. Here's the crazy thing. Sometimes they both sides might be saying stuff that's a little bit true, but exaggerated. Yeah. But do you think that should some Chinese organization fund something that tries to debunk stuff or do you th for China's f like betterment or do you think that's not even going to help? Yeah, I wish some Chinese American Institute would like at least, like I said, I mean, I think even left and right has it right now. Like who's really the, the neutral actual fact checking source for left and right in America right now. Right, like right, right. literally there's just a lot of nuance lacking and a lot of neutrality lacking. Uh, point number five, Andrew, people have personal experiences, personal incentives, whatever you perceive one group did to your people, that's just what you're basing your feelings on, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think like people have certain personal incentives to uh, view groups a certain way. Like uh, I think a lot of people want to view South Korea very favorably as they should, I guess. Right, they haven't given them, I guess, a lot of reason to not, yeah, unless maybe you're another Asian who feels like South Koreans are so cocky or whatever. Yeah, it seems cool, though, but, you know, like all the all the culture and pop culture and media coming out of Korea, you know. Um, and then some people, they would, it was in their personal incentive to view Chinese uh, to be not as favorable because maybe it makes them feel better, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point number six. Um, basically, I just think that a lot of things are really nuanced and really complicated, but to see a list like this, it could make somebody really emotional or just choose to disengage from it completely. Yeah. That's what I think a lot of Chinese Americans have done, Andrew. I think a lot of Chinese Americans, they don't know how to engage with this because you would probably go through a roller coaster of emotions seeing something like this, right? So you completely disengage and just go... I'm AZN. I'm defined by like lambdas or KD5 or like whatever new identity I can subsume. Mm. ADA rising is my new identity. Right. Yeah. So anyway, let's just get into the comments section. Andrew, Bree Shu said this is the full Asian American biggest haters ranking. Korean, Taiwanese, Japanese, Chinese, Indian, Vietnamese, Filipino, Koreans being the biggest haters, Filipinos being the most appreciative. Mm. And then it's funny because a bunch of Koreans came in and said, yeah, I'm the biggest hater. I am like so proud of being the biggest hater. That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that Koreans are at the top of the hater list. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, is it just because they're killing it so hard that they can hate on everybody or they feel like they got hated on for centuries or millennia? So now that's like they're back. Uh, I think sometimes a slight superiority complex can lead you to work very hard on things. And I think maybe that's what's happened. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said the China hate on the hate on China is worldwide. I honestly feel like China doesn't deserve the hate. This is what a black girl said. And then a white guy said, it's effed up, man. China been good to us. I'm sure he's referring to Panda Express, Timu, Sheen, everything you get on Amazon. Chinese women, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just you know. everything. A lot of this stuff came from China or was assembled there for cheap. Yeah, I mean, again, guys, the, the whole China and the Western... Uh, relationship is really complicated and we're not here being some uh you know woo mouths or pro china people i'm just like dang i mean listen america really needs china but also america doesn't like china and, and america really doesn't like a lot of china's friends you yeah. know what i mean so it is true that chinese friends yeah i i probably wouldn't be friends with them either so i don't agree with some of their decisions but they also got their own agenda going right um i think the biggest thing about china is not that the downsides for sure should be acknowledged but I think the upsides are oftentimes like completely ignored. Uh, like, so then, cause they're just like, oh, making the cheap stuff, that doesn't count. Cause then that was made with child labor or slave. Like, you know what I mean? It's like this whole thing where I'm just like, do you really care? Tell me if you care or not. Um, next comment, tankies can't handle being lower class. Uh, basically, this is like a really common thing on the internet. You see somebody said, damn, Chinese people don't even like Chinese people. That explains a lot. And then somebody said Chinese Americans are brainwashed to hate China. 
uh, even Chinese. David, David, when when you see the numbers that Chinese Americans don't rank China that much, do you think what is he, do you think it carries over into like maybe why Chinese people aren't always on the same page or unified in America as much. You know, the things that we talk about or maybe like yeah. Chinese people want to date out of their race. And or like, you know, else for example, my Korean ch- friend was always telling me that like Chinese would ask him for a, a Korean mechanic instead of a Chinese mechanic. Mm. Like even though they were in an Asian enclave. Yeah, I don't, man, it's really complicated. Um, I think that there's reasons, a lot of g- good reasons for it and a lot of not good reasons for it too. But uh, the Chinese identity, man, is very, it's not an easy thing to understand. And it's not mm-hmm. an easy thing, I guess, to be fully new in a nuanced, educated way, be proud of. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, why do they hate the Philippines and Vietnam? And then other people, these this, uh, Filipinos and Viets are saying, no, it's because they see us as jungle Asians because we're poor countries uh, because of our skin color. Uh, yeah, I think it's more because uh, the... I guess the countries themselves like are not seen as like that geopolitically powerful. And also cuz people would want to go to Vietnam right well, now. Well, to visit. And they would want to go to Boracay, but maybe their view, especially from the older people in terms of like uh governmental systems or whatever, not that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this guy said, Asian Americans are obviously oblivious to the crimes of Japan. It literally invaded and massacred folks in all of the listed countries. Some, And then there was another comment being like, literally, they were cutting your grandparents' heads off. Did everybody forget? And somebody said, nope, they were deemed for inventing anime, Hello Kitty, video games, and then, of course, J.A.V. Well, David, what hentai. do you think about this sentiment on the internet about like young Asian Americans that are like, hey, that kind of grew up on Japanese anime and Japanese products that are like, man... We really should hate Japan more, but we all know the cool stuff that they gave us. Yeah, man, it's tough because it was about 80 years ago. So I'm just like, I don't know what everybody's supposed to think. I I don't know what everybody's grandparents told them. Or I guess, what is everybody's timeline for understanding what impacted them versus 40 years ago, 80 years ago? Right. I mean, I guess if every generation is 20 years, that was four generations ago. Um, This guy said, as a Korean and Chinese American, I literally cannot stand mainlanders. They have such an odd superiority complex over Asian Americans. It's disappointing. Mm. Um, Do you, how much do you think it is that like, I would say that Chinese people, they don't do a lot of bad stuff, to be honest, but they're not the coolest, most likable people. Uh, I, I, I would agree. I on would agree. Se- That's how it's on viewed. On a sociality yes. Yes. level, on a just a ping level. Somebody said Koreans view themselves as the Aryan race of Asians. Yes and no. I just think they've absorbed a lot. Like, if you look at different spheres of influence in every Asian country, like Japan took a lot from Portugal and England in the 1700s, 1800s. Korea most recently got a lot from America in the 1960s. That's why I think somebody would say that in terms of heavy influence. Um... People are saying, I like first world Northeast Asians, so it's only South Korea and Japan for me. I I think a lot more people would say that than they would want to admit. Somebody said Taiwan is just an Israel in the making, uh, an American proxy war, Ukraine in the past, Israel in the present, Taiwan in the future. Yeah, that's like some hyper geopolitical stuff that's really complicated. Um, Somebody just said Asians have no unity and are jealous of each other. Mm. Andrew, agree, disagree? Kind of a blanket statement Uh, to make from that, but yeah, there's some truth to that. Because obviously if the numbers are so variable but i guess they were kind of aligned on hating china and liking japan right i don't know maybe they're united by a common enemy somebody said Fili- not. filipino americans yeah i am proud that, th- that we are the biggest appreciators it makes me warm and fuzzy <laughs> uh somebody said there's 300 million indonesians but our voices are always neglected that is true though people do not think about indonesia as a gigantic country oh indonesia is a huge country but i think the population in america is not that significant this is a good commentator he said As an actual Chinese person living in the West, honestly, I just ignore it. It's an unfortunate byproduct of geopolitical competition. And fortunately, outside of the online Twitter, Reddit, brain rot swamp, I don't encounter too much of it IRL. That's what I was saying, where like in real life, you don't feel the China hate. It's just something easy to type out on the internet. And so while I do think there is anti-China propaganda, and while I do think obviously China has done some unsafe, savory things but also doesn't do the worst things either uh i guess the 
it's so, it's only really if you're tapped into like all this social media news yeah. and then everybody's trying to fear monger you and say, oh, China's taking over. Oh, China this, China spying on you, China's doing this. Honestly, I got the real breakdown. First of all, I do think, I agree with you in general and I agree with this comment, but maybe a slight more undertone from other Asians than you would think. But I'll say this, I think the insecurity that Chinese Americans have about themselves messes up our own community. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, we know that everybody else feels that way about us. So we kind of feel that way about ourselves and the internal pings and in sociality never develop or get better. Right, right. Because then now you're looking at other Chinese like, I don't need yeah, to be around other yeah, Chinese. Yeah, you making me whack. I don't want to be whack, but you made me whack. And then oh. that kind of causes some breakdown in the sociality. Interesting. Because it's not like every community can just run its on its own fishbowl actually so anyway guys let us know what you think of brian shoes video in the comment section below is it just the age thing is it a geographical thing do we need more granular data is it surprising until next time with the hot pot boys we out peace, peace.